Fox Sports. We are Blackhawks. We are LA. After two gut-wrenching losses in a row to Minnesota today, the Halos ace Jared Weaver takes the mound and looks to turn the tide. Twins, Angels next. This homestand started off on a good note, taking two or three against the Oakland Athletics, but the Halos have dropped the first two against the Twins. And today on a business person special on this Wednesday afternoon, it's the finale of the three-game set. Hi, everybody from inside the Big A alongside Mark Gubas on Victor Rojas. So glad you could join us here on this afternoon for baseball, a beautiful afternoon for baseball on Fox Sports West. Today, Jared Weaver will tow the slab for the Halos. He started this homestead off on a winning note on Friday against Oakland and trying to snap this three-game losing streak. Victor, perfect guy to have on the mound. His velocity has picked up more consistent pitches in the 90s. That's helped set up his curveball changeup and slider. He's been very, very good in his last five starts. Three and one mark with an ERA. 1.64, 22 innings at home of late, only one earned run, so he's been throwing the ball better. The perfect guy with his attitude, his competitive nature to have on the mound, to be able to set the tone, have to win this game before you take that tough road trip coming up, four in Oakland and three in Texas. Look from the established that fastball, and again, that curveball and changeup, so important for him, but fastball velocity, key for him, first and foremost. Now let's see what the Angels' offense can muster against the big right-hander Mike Pelfrey, because the Angels' offense has struggled, especially in situational hitting. They've struggled not only in this homestand, but going back to the series prior to the All-Star break. We're just about ready for baseball here at the Big A, so sit back and relax. We're going to bring you the lineups and the first pitch when we return. Angels Baseball is brought to you by the Hyundai 100,000 Reasons event, now through July 31st. By Corona, who invites you to find your beach. And by Mercury Insurance. Get two Angels tickets with a fast, free auto insurance quote from Mercury Insurance. Log on to angels.com slash mercury to learn more.
three game set between the Halos and the Minnesota Twins. Jared Weaver against Mike Palfrey getting ready to uh, kick this one off on a sun drenched afternoon. Good crowd on hand. A lot of kids here to watch Jared Weaver face the Minnesota Twins, Gooby. He has faced the Twins here at home and has done something very special. Oh, very special last season. And look at our 18 team Ubers rewind. Speaking of that special night, back on May 2nd last season. Jared Weaver against the same Minnesota Twin Club had it working had the defense had great command of all his pitches and then finally fly ball to Torrey Hunter in right field a no hitter for Jared Weaver Chris Iannetta did an outstanding job in that game behind the plate Weaver taking the hill again today against the same Minnesota he, quote. He will not have Mark Trumbo at third base as he did in that no-hitter, by the way. Started and finished the game at third base. We'll have at no first base, though, today. He will be at first base, and uh, Jerry continues to get ready for this uh, final game. The Angels have lost three consecutive. They dropped the Sunday game against Bartolo Colon in the Oakland A's. 4-3 loss on Monday. And then uh, a game last night that got out of hand in the 10th inning. Ernesto Frieri struggled. To put hitters away last night, gave up five runs that Billy Buckner came in and allowed two runs. It was a grand slam and a two-run shot allowed in that tenth inning. The Halos ended up losing 10-3 after tying it in the bottom of the ninth inning. Situational hitting continues to be a huge problem for this team over the last couple of weeks, and hopefully uh, things change today against Just Belfry. simplify the approach. Don't try to do too much. Wherever the pitch is thrown, just go with that pitch and relax at the plate. Well, Weaver and the Angels have taken the field. We'll take a look at Ron Gardenhire starting nine for the Minnesota Twins. They are fourth in the central, 11th back. With a 43-54 and 54 record, Cleet Thomas jumps up to the leadoff spot. He's in left field. Doug Bernier, we saw him at shortstop on Monday. He's playing second today. Justin Morno serves as a DH. Ryan Doman, who's been the right fielder, is behind the plate. Joe Maurer still back at home with his wife and his two wins. The baby's born yesterday. Congratulations to them. Chris Herman had the grand slam of the 10th. He's in right. Trevor Plouffe is back in third. Chris Colabella gets his guard at first base. Aaron Hicks is in center. Pedro Florimo will bat nice and play shortstop. Taking out Jared Weaver, as we pointed out on Friday at the beginning of this homestand, threw exceptionally well against the Oakland A's, picked up his fourth win. 7-2 in his career versus the Minnesota Twins with ERA 3.58. The loss in on his fastball has improved over his last three or four starts and because of that his secondary pitches are that much better defensively for the angels this afternoon you've got jb shuck in left mike trout is in the center colin calgill back out and right for the second straight game josh hamilton out of the lineup with that sore right ankle the infield has Alberto Cayasco, Eric Ivar, Howie Kendrick, and Mark Trumbo from third to first, and Chris Iannetta behind the play. Chris Iannetta get in to start behind the play. We talked about what he did with Weaver last season here against the Minnesota Twins, catching that no-hitter. Just, I just feel he's going to have one of those games both with the glove and with the bat against Minnesota today. Handling Weaver very well, getting his spots early, especially with his fastball. Nineta played half that game with a broken right wrist after getting hit by the pitch early on in the game, but stayed in there. And caught the rest of that no-no. Cleve Thomas, the left fielder, ready to lead things off. He's had a very good series against the Angels. He looks at strike one. Thomas last night, a couple of hits and a walk. He's got four hits in the series. Two doubles and a home run. Pitch misses inside. It's a ball and a strike. Weaver in that start against Oakland on the 19th. Six and two thirds, no runs, four hits, eight strikeouts, four walks. As Thomas waves at the off speed pitch. One and two. Some fastballs early on, like we anticipated from Weaver. And a swing and a miss. Down goes Thomas. One out. High fastball, 90 mile an hour fastball. Four fastballs from Weaver, establishing that pitch early on. Makes his changeup curveball that much better as the game progresses. What we've seen so far from the Minnesota hitters, especially the lefties, they will chase that high fastball away. Very difficult pitch to catch up to as a hitter. We saw it last night with Tommy Hansen on the hill. First start off the DL, five and a third for Tommy. Eight strikeouts for him as Weaver delivers a strike to Bernier. No decision for Hansen with that loss. Occurring in extra innings. 0 and 2. 
Bernier, one for five in the big leagues this year, has a double and an RBI. Major League hit on Monday. RBI double. Fouls this one off. 92 mile an hour fastball from Weaver. Well, it was good to see that velocity that Tommy Hansen had yesterday. 92, 93, 94 consistently. 43 pitches for Hansen over 90 miles an hour so far for Weaver. Three already here in the first inning. Little loop around to shallow center. That's going to fall in for a base hit. Broken bat flare by Bernier. Comes with one out here in the first, and Morneau will come to the plate. That's why when you think, when you look back at somebody throwing a no-hitter, how special that is. That's a well-thrown baseball by Weaver and a flare into the outfield for Bernier. So many things have to go well to throw a no-hitter. Morneau, the DH today, 272 batting average, seven home runs, 52 runs batted in. Had a couple of hits late in the game yesterday. Also scored two runs. Takes down low. Angels two and three on this homestand. And again, a road trip tomorrow in Oakland. Four-game series at the Coliseum. Angels at the start of the day, 11 back in the West, and now in fourth place. Seattle is in third, 10 back. Morna waves at the on-speed pitch, 21. Oakland and Houston right now playing at Minute Maid Park, tied at one. That game's in the top of the sixth inning. Texas will host the Yankees later tonight. Matt Garza making his Texas Rangers debut, and that sets up a Weaver-Garza matchup Monday in Texas. 1-1. Morneau rolls it foul, one ball, two strikes. Boy, back to back, good curveballs from Weaver against Morneau. Out in front. You wonder if he'll try to go fastball up here now. Tommy Hansen went a high fastball yesterday against Morneau. Bernier over at first. Goes with that high fastball, evens up the count. Two balls, two strikes. The Angels with the three consecutive losses here at the Big A. Now 26 and 28 at home. 20 and 24 out on the road this season. This one's fouled off into the third base seats. Thirteen pitches thrown by Weaver. Ten have been strikes. Bernier takes off. It's fouled back. And Bernier had a pretty good jump. So he doesn't run a lot. There's 30 stolen bases. Been caught 20 times. Trying to avoid the double play ball. Sending Bernier with Morneau at the plate. Kayas will way off the line. Ibar is shading Morno towards second base. And Kendrick in a couple of steps at second. 2-2. Two -two. Here doesn't go. This was a huge foul. Boy, Morno's fought off some pretty tough pitches, and it's a bat against Weaver. Great changeup from Weaver. Barely got a piece of it. This one, the seats just behind home plate. Eight pitches so far in this plate appearance. The majority of the pitches on the outside part of the plate.
Quick throw to first. Bernier back. Weaver with 18 career pickoffs. Best season as far as that statistic, 2011 when he had six pickoffs. Very quick move for a t tall right-handed batter, pitcher. Bernier takes off again. Warno fouls it off yet again. Especially in the first inning, you want, you're thinking in terms of you want to go deep in the game. Ace of the staff, seeing the bullpen been used quite a bit of late. And you're making some very good pitches, and Morno keeps fouling off some tough ones. Frustrates, especially early on when you have good command of all your pitches. Missed inside, snap throw back to first, Bernier back. And a full count now. And you figure that Bernier certainly will be on the move now. Very difficult to have a strike him out, throw him out. We were more than likely will throw a changeup or a curveball here. Very difficult pitch to throw out if you're Chris Ionetta, a slow all speed pitch. Weaver struck out Thomas to start off the game. Bernier with a bloop single. Takes off as Morno swings and misses a throw down to second. It is not in time. Stolen base. But finally, Morno heads back to the dugout. Two outs now. Yeah, it'd be almost impossible for Ionetta to throw up Bernier on that one, but a perfect pitch from Weaver finally getting Morno to swing and miss at a slow pitch. Out in front. Pretty good throw, but Bernier pretty quick slides in. First stolen bases first. What a great angle on that curveball. On top, 12 to 6 variety on the break. Morno well at front, front hip opening up, cannot keep the bat back. Had to protect against everything else because he saw everything and the kitchen sink in that plate appearance. As Doman looks at a strike. And it's certainly an advantage for Doman as he stands in that all deck circles. He's seen every single pitch Weaver has just in one at bat for Morno. Delmont last night had a couple of big hits late. RBI double in the eighth, RBI double in the tenth. It's a breaking pitch outside. It's one ball, one strike. Delmont last night in the sixth inning in a situation in which he had a man in scoring position, popped out, went down in the dugout, fired his helmet down in the tunnel. And then his next two plate appearances resulting in two big hits for him. Both from the left side of the plate. Two balls, and one strike. 238 batting average, nine home runs, 42 runs batted in for Doman, becoming now pretty much the everyday right fielder. Mauer gone and back home. Herman, who got the start last night, gets the start in right, and Doman, catcher by trade, back behind the plate. The 22 pitch first inning for Jared Weaver. 16 strikes, 2-1. Moment bounces this one toward first. Trumbo's got it, feeds Weaver, and the inning comes to an end. No runs a hit, one left off. We'll head to the bottom of the first. Chuck Trout and Pools to face Mike Pelfrey with no score.
at bat for uh, Justin Morneau against Jared Weaver there. Drove the pitch count up, but a couple of strikeouts. And no runs coming across. Take a look at Mike Sosha starting nine for the Halos at 46 and 52 with that three game losing streak. And as we pointed out, now behind the Seattle Mariners in the American League West, 11 back of the Oakland A's. Jamie Shuck will lead things off. Left Mike Trout is at center. Albert Pujols to DH. Mark Trumbo jumps up to the cleanup spot. He's at first. Howie Kendrick at second. Kayaspo at third. Chris Sinet is doing the catching today. Colin Calgo gets a second straight start in right field. And Eric Ibar. Bat night and play shortstop. Taking on the 29-year-old right-hander, native of Wichita, Kansas, by the name of Mike Pelfrey. Mike Pelfrey, fastball 90 to 95, slider, curveball, split finger, fastball, 3 0 in his career versus the Angels, but an area just under five at 4.95. He faced the Angels back on April 16th. Gave up four runs, seven hits, five innings of work. Left with a 7-4 lead. First one to J.B. Shock is it for a strike. J.B. went one for five yesterday. 289 batting average. 13 doubles, a couple of triples. Reaches for that one. Flips it foul. And it's an 0-2 count. Give me the Twins defensively here in just a second. Palfrey, former first round pick, ninth overall by the New York Mets out of Wichita State. Side as a free agent to all of last season, a good chunk of last year. Tommy John surgery. The Twins taking the flyer on the big right hander. Big time prospect coming up through the Mets system. He's always had a very good fastball with movement. One two to Shuck on the way. Down low. Two balls, two strikes. Mike Trout on deck. Albert Pujols to follow. Just a beautiful afternoon for baseball. This one's lined to center field. The leadoff man is on board for the Angels. His shot reaches for that two strike pitch, picks up a knock. Brings up Trout. Check out the Twins defensively. Thomas Hicks and Herman in the outfield from left to right. Luke, Florbo, Bernier, Colabello from third to first. Delman behind the plate. And Herman, who got the job behind the plate last night. It's his first career start in right field. Has played some left field before. First in the major leagues in right field. No outfield assists in his career yet, but very solid behind the plate. Him and Delman switch positions. Pelfrey, one batter into his start today. Works from the stretch. Mike Trout is ready to step in. Start his plate appearance. First one is off the plate. Trout, a two hit game last night, finishing up two for five. First inning single for him, extended his hitting streak. 15 games now. And it's two balls, no strikes. Short lead for Shock at first. 2 0. Strike on the corner. Mike Machlinski calling the balls and strikes this afternoon. Good count for action, possibly here for the Angels. 2 1 count. Fastball count for Trout. Jackets jam, fouls it back. Two balls, two strikes. We'll check out our Hyundai key to the game. So Van Halen today, unchained. I think Mike Sosha has to allow some of these base dealers an opportunity to try to take that extra base and steal some bags against Pelfrey. 
Back in 2011, he allowed 29 stolen bases in 31 attempts. Doma has thrown out 24% of would-be base dealers throughout his career, so it's a good combination for Soch to have these runners going. At least five guys in the lineup for the Angels that could steal a base. Two two down low. Full count now. I figure he'll be on the move now with a full count at Pujol on deck. Mentioned. Uh, Last couple of series for the Angels, base runners have not been the issue. It's leaving them stranded, and they're in scoring position has been the biggest issue. Halos last night with 10 hits, the night before nine. Only had four against Cologne, but eight on Saturday, eight on Friday when they won the two games. Shuck takes off. Three and two is a swing and a miss. The third down by Doman is a one hopper. It's a stolen base. Jump is four stolen base for shot. Palfrey goes fastball away. High leg kick, six foot seven Palfrey, so a little bit longer times to the plate. So you should be successful as far as stolen base attempts in this game. So man in scoring position now for Albert Pujols. Had a three hit game last night. One and out. Now we're hitting 254 with that three for five performance last night. Picked up his 17th home run of the year, 492nd of his career. One O pitch down and away. Two balls and no strikes. Mentioned no Josh Hamilton in the lineup yet again. Sore right ankle. Quarter zone shot. As of yesterday, Social said he's missed a couple of games, so we'll see when he comes back. Two oh downstairs. Three balls and no strikes. And Mark Trumbo on deck. And Paul Holtz, if he gets a fastball that he can drive, we'll have the green light here. Albert now with 59 runs batted in on the season. 3 0 pitch. Swings it right up the middle. Base hit for him. Shuck is going to be waved in. Aaron Hicks's throw he is cut off. And the Angels with a 1 0 lead. Halos with just their third hit on the homestand with a man in scoring position. Also, an opportunity for Bulls to have that confidence of swinging at a 3 0 pitch. That base hit by Boromon in the center field for an RBI base hit. RBI number 60 this season for Pujols. Well, he centered in on one area of the plate, Pujols did, and he got the fastball exactly where he wanted to and drives in J.B. Shock. So Albert is on board, and it's Mark Trumbo at the plate. Hold on. Trumbo also a multi hit game last night, two for four, hit his 22nd home run of the season the opposite way. Picked up his 58th run, batted in. Three for five in his career versus Palfrey, including a home run. As I recall, that might have been in City Field when he went the other way, right center field. In 
and tight. One ball, one strike. Both starting pitches have to work pretty hard here in the first inning. Number of pitches. 17 already here for Pelfrey with just one out. Bottom of the first. This is back toward the middle. Bernier to his right has it off balance. Throw to first. They get Trumbo for the second out. Nice play by Bernier. Pujols advances to second. They have some serious coverage in the middle infield here for Minnesota. Dozier's been outstanding at second. Bernier, nice play right up the middle and a strong throw. Back to first base. Seen him at shortstop on the backhand. Perfect throw to the first. Might have had an opportunity, especially with pull holes, to get the force play, but it allows pull holes to be in scoring position now. Yeah, both Florimone and Bernier going for that baseball, so no coverage at the bag. So Albert at second, two outs. Here's Howie Kendrick takes it inside for ball one. Howie last night, one for five. A 306 batting average. 11 home runs and 41 runs batted in. Slow roller towards short. They tried to pull that great pitch, and it comes to an end. The Angels do strike for run on a couple of hits. We played one here at the Big Eight. What nothing Angels. the bottom of the first inning. The Angels a 1-0 lead. Hey folks, on August the 1st, the Halos begin a four-game set against the Toronto Blue Jays at 7.05. Fans in attendance will receive an Albert Pujols pint class courtesy of Farmer John while supplies last. Purchase tickets today at the Angels Stadium ticket office or by logging on. You just <laughs> knew he was going to get a base hit in RBI. That's Angels why you're ready for that read. Well, you know, it's all about uh, segues yes. and uh, moving the show along. Yes. Timing. Right on cue. Timing is everything yeah. for you. He just needs to follow up what Trout did on his pint last yeah. day. Oh, he's he got his single out of the way. No, no, it's got to be on August 1st. It's got to be on the day they give away the class, right? Yeah, that's true. But we still have the single out of the way right now. Though. So if he gets it today, we'll just carry it over. Carry it over. August 1st. Okay. There's Herman, the right fielder, swings through. An off-speed pitch. It's one ball, one strike. Herman getting to start in right field. First time he's played right field in his big league career. Just a couple of games in left. But he's the backup catcher to Joe Maurer. Swings through that off-speed pitch again, and it's one and two. Herman last night, 
Three for five, two singles, and then the grand slam in the tenth inning off Ernesto Frieri. The break of pitch has stayed on the inner half. Stay away against him. Fouled off the left. Still at one and two. First career grand slam for Herman, and uh, what an incredible catch by a little guy with the glove and the club seats on the third base side. That's why you bring your glove to a game. Fantastic catch. Swing and a miss down goes Herman. Third strike out of the game for Weaver. Well, he's starting to get a real good feel for his breaking pitch. Way to snap off that breaking ball. Great location. Mix in some curveballs and sliders already in the game. One out, nobody on for Trevor Plouffe. Presby Carmelite product. Takes ball one. At the start Monday. Came in late in the game yesterday as a pitch hitter. Went over two overall. Bloop on Monday ended up going one for four. 257 batting average, 10 home runs, 36 runs batted in. That's 10 home runs tied for the team lead. Josh Willingham is on a DL. Drives this one out to center. Playable for Trout. Two well. That game where Weaver had to no hitter, Kloof had a couple good swings. Parmley had a couple good swings, especially that one foul ball down the left field line. Other than that, Weaver was in complete control on that no no. It's Parmley back down to the minor leagues. Drives nobody off for Chris Colabello getting a start at first base today. So it's the DH the first two games. Oh for three last night. 129 batting average. Has one RBI. Putting up the fantastic numbers of Triple-A Richmond. First taste of big league life. Massachusetts native. Foul back. One ball, one strike. Corbello proud member of Team Italy in this year's World Baseball Classic. And, uh, dare I say, surprising team. Yeah, they Italy. played very well. Yeah. They had Grilly Cheese closing things out. Jason yes. Grilly. Now on the disabled list for the Pirates. He's eating Grilly. Yes. Yeah. Yes, he is. Just hanging out. Got to get that arm healthy. 1-1. With that far off the plate, he's going to have a difficult time with Weaver with his command of his fastball, the outside corner, and his slider. He can mix an occasional changeup on that part of the plate. One, two on the way. Fastball just missed off. Weaver wanted it. But Zelensky didn't give it to him. That's a pretty good pitch. Four seamer at 90 miles an hour. And he catches the outside corner. Foul back. Colabella does not get cheated in his swings. It's all or nothing. And he wants extra bases. And again, well off the plate. So very difficult for him to square up the baseball if it's on the outside corner or just off the plate. Again, a young hitter got the benefit of that call from that 90 mile an hour fastball from Weaver. He can afford even to go off the plate further. Set him up now with a fastball. 72 mile an hour curveball. He's thinking off speed. Try to paint the fastball away. See if we'll get the call this time around. Weaver threw 23 pitches in that first inning of that prolonged that bat and battle with Morno. Swing and a miss. Down he goes. Strikeout number four for Jared. We will head to the bottom of the second inning. Angels leading at one and up.
to nothing. Kayaswa Nineta, as well as Calgill, to face Mike Pelfrey in the second. It's our pleasure to welcome in Angels chairman of the board, old Blue Eyes himself, Dennis Cool, <laughs> kind enough to join us. And you never thought you were going to get that introduction. Yeah, you? absolutely. Not. <laughs> <laughs> We've got the cooking challenge coming up uh, once again. Uh, this is uh, on August the seventh, I believe, on a Wednesday. At downtown Disney at the ESPN Zone. Absolutely. We're ready to go. What? Who is partaking in this year's festivities? Well, the lineup starts with this. We have Kevin Jepson defending his title against Ernesto Ferrari, Garrett Richards, Michael Kahn, Hank Conger, and Howie Kendrick. Howie Kendrick in there now. Yeah, I, I'm picking him as a dark horse this year. Oh, perfect. You know, I really do. I, I, uh, I saw him the other day, and he's, he's, got the, he's got the good attitude for this challenge. I, I, I think he'll do fine. Now, you've been uh, an all-star judge, not only in this competition, but international competitions as far as <laughs> cooking contests are concerned. What is the key for one of these guys to win the cooking challenge? Uh, the um, Bribery? <laughs> that helps. <laughs> that really helps. But it's, um, it's a lot to do with the, the, the style. I like to see style points. Do oh, so you like the... Uh, the presentation absolutely so if it tastes bad but looks good you might get a couple bonus points get some style points for that oh, you sure know it's did. about the sizzle you know it's what i was part sizzle. of the judging last year and I, I believe i'm doing it again this year i don't remember kevin jepson's platter that won it last year do you uh it was a breakfast dish oh, um, that's right. <laughs> uh, this year we're doing a little bit different we're going to do some barbecue oh. uh, uh you know we're all going to be cooking at once and we've got the grills all fired up so it's going to be a lot more fun this year how about some philly cheesesteaks since we were talking about jason grilly <laughs> <laughs> any any cheesesteaks going to be possibly out there as far as the menu? Um, I think that's going to be up to you, Mark, to get down there and talk to those oh, guys. Okay. <laughs> Maybe you could sponsor one of them. <laughs> it's the only way that uh, Mark would go. <laughs> something Philadelphia. Maybe cream cheese. There or a have. soft pretzel would be fine. <laughs> <laughs> now, if folks want to go to uh, the ESPN zone, because this one's down the line, might be trouble for Herman. It falls foul. It's an 0 what count on Because last year, they were 0-2 count, I should say. Last year, great crowd. Oh, it was. At the zone. It was fantastic. How did folks uh, get tickets if they wanted to go and, uh, and show up there? The best way is to uh, go to am830.net uh, uh, and uh, click on the top of the page, Cooking Challenge. And you can purchase your tickets online. Um, we're hoping all our fans will come out and join us. And have, it's going to be a lot of fun. They're going to see some, uh, some of the players there in action. Now, some folks may not know this. It's, it, the players come, and they've got an idea of what they want to do. But it's not just... They're not by themselves. They, they're getting some assistance from uh, some top chefs around uh, the Southland. Uh, that's true. We've got the chef from downtown Disney. We've got uh, the Catch, the Ranch, the Winery, Mastro's, and Timo's, uh, Solani's new steakhouse. Oh. The chef's coming there. So we're going to be interested to see what he comes up with. Wow, does that mean Timo's coming back again this year? <laughs> Is that a hint there? <laughs> <laughs> Come back to run his restaurant. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Are you going to be judging once again? Yes, myself. Um, I'm going to try to talk Clyde Wright since it's a barbecue and he's an expert at barbecue to get him involved. You uh, got to talk Clyde into free food, <laughs> seriously. Come on. Well, I, I want to make him feel good about it. <laughs> he's always happy when we talk about it. So that's the, oh, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, he sends us autographed pictures every time we do that, too. <laughs> oh, God. He's the best. Uh, one ball, two strikes on Ionetta. And it even to count at two and two. But uh, this is coming up on August the 7th, ESPN Zone, downtown Disney. It's a, it's a fantastic event. I had a chance for the first time last year to, to kind of be a part of it. And uh, it, was, it exceeded my expectations because I thought it was going to be kind of a small, intimate group. And it is. I mean, the, the space is intimate. But it was jam-packed with Angel fans. And uh, I think folks even get some autographs after the fact as well, if time permits. Uh, the other thing is, too, it's for a good cause. It's for the Angel Baseball Foundation, which allows us to raise money to uh, give grants here locally to the RBI program, uh, Boys and Girls Club of Anaheim, um, Girls Inc., all the, all the um, local um, charities that we're able to support by our fans coming out and supporting us. Yeah, you've done this a number of years right now. How many years has this been this now? Is, this is our fourth year now. So it's uh, and it gets bigger every year. We we we're hoping the attendance is big, and we we may move it to a bigger location. Yeah, I was just going to say, Ionetta went around there for round number two, but uh, the ESPN Zone does a terrific job. They've hosted uh, any number of events with AMA 30, and they do a fantastic job over there. But I would I would imagine that because of the growth and how quickly it's becoming popular with with the fans, because I mean it's a little weekday afternoon, a weekday morning, I should mm -hmm. say. You could take a couple of hours. 
it's grown and grown that you almost do have to move it somewhere. Uh, we, we, that's what we think. We think uh, with, the, with the way the fans have uh, helped us in this that we're going to uh, uh, possibly have to uh, find a big tent and put those grills in there and get them all fired up. Well, what made you think about having this this contest to begin with? It, it certainly is a great idea, and you mentioned about how the, the fan interest has been outstanding, but what made you think as far as this would be a great thing to be able to have, not only for the players to be there and interact with the with the fans, but also be able to have the certain kind of meals that they like to cook? Well, you know, there was uh, there was an always interest in uh, these guys. Are, some of them have a hobby of, uh, of cooking and everything else like that, and we thought we'd match it, match it up. Uh, and um, uh, KSP, uh, ESPN Zone has uh, really been a great partner. Dennis, we appreciate it. We will Thank see you. you at the uh, cook-off coming up on August the 7th. Brought to you by Miami 30th. The ESPN Zone at Downtown Disney. Always great to see you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, guys. Good luck Thank to you. you. Got it. We're through two here at the Big A. The Angels still up. One to nothing. Jared Weaver at four strikeouts will face eight, nine, and one for the Twins. Hicks, Flora Moen, and then Thomas. Well, thanks to Dennis Cool. Kind enough to join us here talking about the cooking challenge that's coming up. The Good chairman. Event. Yeah, he has he has a chairman. Aaron Hicks switch inning outfielder. Center field. Hitting 198 with eight home runs, 25 runs batted in. Hicks went one for three yesterday. Single with a run scored at the tenth. Then I also had a couple of sacrifice bunts, one of which was a spectacular play by Hank Conger. Throw him out at first base on. Probably bounded off the plate. Two balls, no strikes. Weaver 40 pitches, 28 have been strikes. Josh Hamilton not in the lineup today with that sore right ankle. Peter Borges to his right, still working his way back off the disabled loose. To him now. Yeah, still a little discomfort in the wrist for Borges, but getting close. Need to have those two guys in your lineup, Borges and Hamilton. Picks fouls it off to the left, evens up the count. Eagles did make a, a minor move in that they claimed a pitcher, J.C. Gutierrez from the Kansas City Royals. 25 relief appearances this year with Kansas City. 30 years of age at a 3.38 ERA. No word as to where he's headed. At least, uh, we haven't heard. This was back toward the middle. Eric Ibar is there. One out. Coming up later in the game, we'll have the Carlos Jr. Sports Update. So you know the headlines. The Mariners are sailing along. Won eight in a row, playing already this afternoon. 
the pine tar incident 30 years ago today in yankee stadium incredible make you feel old yeah good friend of mine he lost his uh, mind for a short period of time you think he snapped yeah just a little yeah <laughs> just a bit Hormone swings through the change up to no two count and now the uh, the hitting coach the yes. interim hitting coach for the Kansas City Royals Boy those two involved in that incident had some serious confrontations over the years the pitcher and George Bratt On three pitches Florimone has shown the door for round number two Five punch outs already in the game for Weaver when you can command your all speed so well, you can get these type of swings on a fastball inside, located perfectly from Weaver. Top of the order, Clee Thomas, strikeout victim himself in the first. Looks at a curveball for a strike. Weaver now with five punch outs. No walks, one hit allowed, the only base runner. Base hit, broken bat flare by Doug Bernier with one out of the first. Oh, and two. Thomas doesn't like that call, steps out. It's that no seam fastball with good movement. Rolled softly up the first baseline and the dugout. All of a sudden, we were getting back into manageable. Pitch counts, 3-0-2 counts already in the game for Weaver. 49 pitches thrown now in the game here with two outs in the third. One ball, two strikes. The game in Houston is now 4-3 Oakland, top of the seventh thing at Minute Maid Park. 37 strikes of his 50 pitches thrown. That's an outstanding for Weaver. Tommy Hansen had ridiculous splits last night. Balls and strikes. 76 pitches, 56 of them strikes with the eight punch outs. Boy, did he throw the ball well last night. Eight strikeouts, no walks. Down goes Thomas. That's the third consecutive inning in which Weavers had multiple strikeouts. Angel still on top. National anti-bullying organization for kids and teens in the U.S. Stop Out Bullying focuses on preventing bullying and all forms of digital abuse. It educates kids against racism and hatred, deters violence in schools and online, and helps at-risk students. 
To learn how you can help, please visit stopoutbullying.org. 1-0 Angels, bottom of the third here at the Big A. Ibar, Chuck and Trout against Mike Pelfrey. Had himself a 1-2-3 second inning. Ibar hitless last night, 0 for 3. He threw that bases loaded walk in the ninth inning against Clint Perkins. At that point, it brought home the uh, tying run. 282 batting average, four home runs, 36 RBIs. Plouffe playing even with the bag now in a couple of more steps. Morneau doing the same at first. One ball, one strike. Four ground ball outs. The first couple of innings for Pelfrey. And two strikeouts. One one on the way. Nybart moves it out to the left field. Coming in is Thomas. The left fielder makes the grab for the first out. So since giving up that RBI single on a 3 0 pitch, Albert Pujols, six in a row, retired by Pelfrey. We'll head back to the top of the order with JB Shuck coming up. Pelfrey being a tall pitcher at six foot seven really has to work on keeping his balance very deliberate through his delivery Chuck fouls it back over the screen Pelfrey, a 15 game winner for the Mets back in 2010. 3.66 ERA, 34 games, 33 starts. Last year with the Mets, pitching three games. No record and a 2 2 9 ERA, then uh, was shelved with the Tommy John surgery. Took free agency and signed with Minnesota. Two balls and one strike. Back to bat. Split finger fastballs from Pelfrey. Shuck. Drops a beautiful butt on the third base side. Pelfrey's throw is in time. Nice play by the big man. The throw out shock for round number two. Perfect technique by Pelfrey. Not only fields the ball with his bare hand, but you push that ball into the grass and then all in one motion throw the first base. Is a better opportunity to get a grip on the baseball. That was a perfect bunt by Shock. That got down, pushed that ball to the ground, and then throws all in one motion to get Shock at first base. That's well played. He had himself in good throwing position, too. Had his hips open up to make that throw to first base. Scott Barry, the first base umpire with the call. So Trout steps in with two outs, bases clear. That looks at a breaking ball for a strike. Trout over one. Strikeout, pick him in the first. One of two punch outs for Pelfrey. Doesn't walk to the bunnies, allowed two singles to shock into Pujols. Foul back. Pretty good hack at that fastball. Trout yesterday with his multi hit game, his 39th multi hit game of the season. It's tied Major League League. Start of the day tied with Joe Maurer for second overall to batting average. Pelfrey thought he had strike three. Instead, it's ball one. Miguel Cabrera is still leading the American League in batting at 358.
One, two. Well done. And Trout swinging the first at bat on a fastball away. He's tried back to back fastballs away against him. He's had a good one so far. A lot of 94, 95 mile an hour fastballs with movement from Pelfrey. Pujols is on deck. Another one, two. Got him. The two out hit by pitch, but demanded first for Albert. They got Trout pretty good. And Mike had to be looking away after a couple tough fastballs on the outside corner, then runs a fastball inside with movement. Gets him right on the bicep area, look like her tricep area. Third batter, Pelfrey's hit. The season so far. Had some movement and some velocity. 95 on the fastball in the tricep area. Best way to combat that, steal a base against him. Big lead for him. Palfrey checks in on him. Gets the hand back in there just in time. Albert one for one, an RBI single in the first inning. 60th run batted in. One and oh. Pelfrey fell behind at three balls and no strikes with Pujols. Had a fastball when he hit back up the middle. Play Trout was thinking about going on that pitch too, but didn't get a real good jump. He stayed at first base. Time to see Pelfrey throw a pickoff throw now to first. His 11 career pickoffs. Pretty good move for him. Albert hits one out to left field. Cleet Thomas is back on the warning track. And curls back in a couple of steps. Makes the grab of the inning. Comes to an end. We played three here at the Big A. One nothing Angels. Top of the fourth inning, one nothing Angels. Jared Weaver back on the hill. Six strikeouts, one hit allowed on this beautiful day for baseball. Very few clouds around the big A. Weaver to face Bernier, Morno, and Doma. Two, three, and four for Minnesota. Bernier, the lone base runner this afternoon. Broken bat flare to center. Takes him side for ball one.
warm day with cotton candy. Yeah, you got to eat that quickly before it melts. Near takes inside. Two balls and no strikes. A lot of kids in the camps here at the ballpark today. I love the uh, day game for getaway day. Two and one. Get a chance to bring your family out, especially here in summer. Yep. A lot of kids at the game. Angels will head up to Oakland after this. Minnesota will head up to Seattle to take on the Mariners. Rounded over to third. Kayaspo has got the skimmer. One out. Seattle currently trailing Cleveland four to one in the third. Let's take a look at our AT&T Twitter poll question of the series. Your favorite ex-Angels first baseman, Ron Carew, Wally Joyner, JT Snow. Hashtags are just below. Send us a tweet at Fox Sports West. So last night, Rod Carew was currently leading. Back and forth between Joyner and Carew. The Hall of Famer, Rod Carew, taking the lead. Rod does a lot of work with the Twins. Ordo takes outside. Struck out of the first inning. We saw 11 pitches. This one's in the air to left. Maybe Shock moving over. Two outs. Nice change up. A lazy fly ball to left field. Fifty-eight pitches thrown in the game so far. A couple outs here in the fourth for Weaver. A lot of pitches in that first inning, but since then has settled down. Weaver has that uncanny ability to be able to get back in the pitch count. He'll have a tough inning, but with his command of his fastball and secondary pitches in the strike zone he can get some quick outs Delman looks at a strike Delman grounded out the trouble in the first inning go for one Good change up. Just got a piece of it and also got a piece of iron that up. They're trying to walk it off. Yep. By the reaction, an important piece of iron So the count remains of the ball and two strikes. Hey, folks, one of the most affordable ways to see the Halos is with the family fun pack. This pack includes four tickets, four hot dogs, four sodas for only $44. Very Reggie Jackson-like. Fun packs available for select games while supplies last. Purchase your tickets at the Angels Stadium Ticket Office or by logging on at angels.com slash fun pack. Chris Iannetta walking his way back. One ball, two strikes with two outs. One nothing Angels here in the fourth. Yeah, I'm sure that's what Chris I know is looking forward to too. A breaking pitch in the dirt yeah, to have to block. Yeah, exactly. That's that's the mindset you have to have as a catcher because you know when you're ahead of the count, a hard slider's coming and it's going to be in the dirt. Yeah, I think I'm going to dig that one with my glove. <laughs> he probably goes fastball up, fastball up. And Weavers go, no, I want to go slider down. This is in the air to right. Calgill broke back. Now comes in a couple of steps. Weaver has himself a one, two, three inning. We will head to the bottom of the fourth here at Angel Stadium. Trouble, Kendrick and Kayasco coming up. Angels leading it.
check availability at 1-800-PICK-ATT. Rethink possible. By CarMax. Start the search for your next car at CarMax. CarMax, start here. And by your Southern California Toyota dealers. Mark Trouble ready to lead things off here in the bottom half of the fourth inning for the Angels. The Halos up one and nothing. Albert Pujols with an RBI single that brought home J.B. Shuck at the first, the only scoring in this game. Trouble Kendrick and Kiaspa gets Mike Pelfrey. Pelfrey with two strikeouts. Two hits, one hit batter. Back-to-back multi-hit game since late in May. 0 for 1 today with a ground ball to second. Still that approach hitting the ball well the other way. Makes you believe that Trumbo is going to stay on a prolonged hot streak. Ahead of the count of 2-0. Oh. As a matter of fact, that ground ball that he hit to second base, Bernier made a nice play going to his right. It was hit more towards the middle. Bernier threw him out. The Pelfrey hasn't shown he'll go back-to-back -back fastballs inside, so Trump will probably be looking away. 3-0. Hasn't walked anybody. 50 pitches by the big right-hander. 28 strikes, 22 balls. Trumbo has been pretty good. Getting the green light on a 3-0 count. 50 pitches for, for Pelfrey so far. 28 in the strike zone. Takes one right down the pipe for a strike. 3-1 and one now. The Angels seven and nine in the month of July. Two fifty nine as a team this month, tied for the uh, second lowest team batting average for a month. They hit two fifty nine in the month of May. They also hit thirty seven home runs in May. Three one line to left field. Thomas will play it on a hop. Lead off single for Trouble. Pretty good piece of hitting. That fastball had some running action inside. Got his hands in, tucked him in, and drove up all the left field. Turned that two-seam fastball over. Still strong enough to be able to bring his hands in and get the good part of the bat on the baseball and into left field for a base hit. Saw that late last night, the ninth inning. As a matter of fact, Perkins running that pitch in on the hands. Got that double. That's really hard to do, especially when you had that approach of late of being very successful, hitting the ball to the right field. Then you see a pitcher running in a fastball that's firm inside and still tuck your hands in and get the good part of the bat impressive how he rolled over a pitch in the first inning and grounded a short so he's 0 for one nine hundred and ninety five career hits 114 this year Second most by Major League second baseman only to Dustin Pedroia who was 121 and Pedroia just signed a Big contract extension for him and the Red Sox to count eight years hundred and ten million dollars a lot of money But a, a guy that you definitely feel comfortable Putting up some good numbers for a lot of years for the Red Sox not only with the bat But with the glove and his leadership capabilities in that clubhouse I think a very good signing by the Red Sox a preemptive move, if you will, with Robinson Cano slated to hit the free agent market this offseason. Fouled off to the right. Can't imagine the Yankees letting Robinson Cano test that market, try to get him signed before the end of the season. The old guard starting to move on for the Yankees. Robinson Cano, that centerpiece of their offense and defense at second base. Yeah, they have. Uh, they do not do contracts until they are up. Whether it's front office, managers, players. At least they haven't. Two balls, two strikes now on Howie. 
A lot of stuff going on with New York, especially with this whole Alex Rodriguez situation. Still trying to get Dirk Jeter back in the lineup. Deshera out for the season. Granderson's been out for a long time, came back, got hurt again. Yeah. Some big names not available for the Yankees. Two two. Jammed them. That's rolled toward the dugout. Angels will be heading to New York. Not on this coming road trip, but the next road trip. They'll go to Cleveland and then to New York to play the Yankees. Four game series at Yankee Stadium. Crawford does a good job as far as pitching inside. His fastball is very good away, but he will run the fastball in enough where you have to be aware of that if you're especially if you're a right-handed batter. The battle here for Howie against Palfrey. Lead off single by Mark Trumbo. He's still at first base. One nothing Angels. Long pause for Pelfrey here. Now he's tired of waiting. One of two things, either by design for have Howie aware that no one's setting up inside, or to see if there's any potentially something going on as far as a hit and run. Or more difficult on a 2 2 count to do so. And Howie strikes out swinging on that hard fastball down and in. One out. <laughs> Fastball 92 had some serious run in action. As mentioned a little earlier, Pelfrey very good as far as throwing inside against right handed batters. Kayasmo at the play with one out, one on. Strike out of Kendrick, the third for Pelfrey today. Berto bounces it back to the mound. Pelfrey fires it to Corvo. That's an inning ending double play. And the Angels have hit up a lot of those this year. We are through four, and it's 1 nothing Angels. The whip 
Weaver has certainly had the whiff working tonight. Fastball upstairs. He's had command of all four of his out pitches, whether it's his fastball, curveball, slider, changeups. Been very good. Lefties having a tough time. Righties having a tough time with the slider, but the command of his fastball has set up all his secondary pitches on the outer half of the plate. Six punch outs today for Weaver so far through four. Coming off another one, two, three inning in which he did not strike out a batter. Two punch outs each in the first three frames. It'll be Herman Plouffe and Colabello for Minnesota. 63 pitches thrown by Weaver. One hit, and that was back in the first, second batter of the game. Herman takes down it away. A strikeout victim in the second. That's right fielder 0 for 1. Extra inning grand slams and careers versus the Angels. Roger Maris, Frank White, and President last night. This Herman. Bases loaded. Mark Ellis, the other one in 2008. But he jumped on that slider on the inner half of the plate and hit it out. It's Ernesto Frieri. First career grand slam for Herman. Now he's trying to yank everything on the inside part of the plate. Two balls and a strike. Ground ball to short. Off the end of the bat, Eric Ibar. Goes down Herman. What away. Well, you have to keep that as a mental note for a pitcher against Herman. Tries to pull everything. That pitch away. Kind of rolled over, hit a weak ground ball, the shortstop. But in the inner half, he's very good. He had two hits and then the home run, the grand slam. There's Trevor Plouffe, the third baseman. Get a fly ball to center field back in the second. 0 for 1. No runs, a hit. One left on for Minnesota. One run, three hits. Two left on for the Angels. Good battle here between Weaver and Pelfrey. Two other games that are currently ongoing. Oakland leading Houston. At Minute Maid Park, bottom of the eighth inning. And Houston trailing that one four to three. Cleveland leading Seattle. The bottom of the fourth. One ball, two strikes. Kluf guessing fastball against Weaver. That's the thing Weaver could do so well. To throw an all speed pitch in the fastball count. This one lined to third, two outs. Nice play by Kayaspo. Kayaspo in position to be readied. Catches that line drive from Plouffe. Slider off the end of the bat. Kayaspo made the play. Two outs, nobody on now for Chris Colabello, the first baseman. Morno getting to start today at DA, so Colabello gets it started first. Struck out to finish off the second. Again, live away against Colabello. As a pitcher, sometimes you're tempted just to show something inside, but. Until he's made that adjustment to stay away on with fastballs and breaking balls. No it two. In the air to right, Calgill moving back on it. Has a beat. One, two, three inning for Weaver. We'll head to the bottom of the fifth inning. Angels still on top, one and nothing.
Defending one nothing Angels. How about that? Happy 100th birthday. No question. Happy birthday. Time Angel fan. Perfect day to be out at the ballpark, that's for sure. Here in the fifth inning, Ionetta, Cal Gill, and Ibar to face Mike Pelfrey. Gave up a leadoff single to Trumbo in the fourth, but then struck out Kendrick and got Kayaspo to hit into the inning, ending double play. The 100th double play the Angels have hit into this season. Halo's hit into three of them last night. Ionetta strike out, victim in the second, 0 for 1. Fouls off the first pitch. Did Jose make that play? Nah. Not unless he jumped on stilts. That was way over his head. He may have played the caramel. He's quick, though. Off. He is quick. Cat like quickness. One ball, one strike. And he always brings the glove. Yes, he does. Middle infielder always making the plays. I had a pinch hit last night, went 0 for 1. 213 average to start of the day with six home runs. 1 1. Fouls it off to the right. I had a 4 for 9 in his career versus Pelfrey. Two two. Palfrey very deliberate on the mound. Just takes his time. Very slow wind up. Everything is well paced. Three strikeouts today. No walks. Definitely tries to keep that balance on the pitching rubber. And Ineta goes down swinging. Hey, folks, on Saturday, Corona Live presents Kenny Chesney's No Shoes Nation Tour, starring Kenny Chesney, Eric Church, Eli Young Band, and Casey Musgrave. Sweet rentals now available and on sale. To reserve that suite, just visit angels.com slash Chesney today. It's an outstanding venue. Chesney was here last year, right? It's in McGraw. Was that two years ago? It was last year, I thought. Yeah. Oh, Church, very, very good. Cowgill takes the breaking pitch away. Hit a bouncer back to the mound in the second inning. It's the only inning in which uh, Palfrey's retired the sign in order the second with Chaos Wayne and Cowgill. One ball and strike. The pattern has kind of remained the same for Belfort. He stays away. And uh, got a chance to put you away. Comes hard inside with that fastball. Kendrick saw it. I identity saw it. And it's very difficult to guess away early in the count just in case he runs that fastball in on you. Trumbo got his hands through the baseball and the one inside. Trout got hit by that fastball on the tricep. Three balls and a strike. Sixty-nine pitches for the big right-hander. Four different strikes. Yeah, coming into the game, there's 50 strikeouts in 88 in the third innings pitch. 27 walks. No walks in the game so far for him, though. Yeah. On the corner, full count. High bar is on deck. Angels only run of this ball game. Back in the first, J.B. Shuck single, stole second, and Pujols brought him home with a single up the middle. Going back outside, 
So it's fouled back. Halos begin a four-game series against Oakland tomorrow night at the Coliseum. C.J. Wilson will be on the mound. Straley on the mound for Oakland. Yeah. A.J. Griffin got to start today against Houston. Friday night, Bartolo Colon and Jerome Williams. Saturday, Tommy Malone and Joe Blanton. Sunday, Jared Parker and Tommy Hansen. Listen, toward the hole. Florimo deep to his right. Plants, fires to first. The throw pulls off Colabello. And Calgan is on board. He comes up. Uh, yeah, you hope he's off a little bit because he had to stretch out and land him. his foot right on the base. Anytime you see a runner have that step on the base go further down the line, a little bit of discomfort. Uh, he's slapping his left leg, so that's not a good sign. He's he angry. Stretched Some... out right there at that point. Mike Sosha is going to go out with Rick Smith. Make sure he's okay. Going quickly down the line, sensing an infield base hit, but stretched out that long stride as he steps on the base. If body language tells you anything, he's feeling something that uh, that's not good. Foot, ankle area. Looks like his right foot. Going old school, talk his way in, yeah. stay in the game. He stretched out that long stride. The instep as it hits that corner of the base. Try to run it off going down the line. He gets credit for an infield base hit, so he's on board for Eric Ibar. When you would think it's a perfect combination to have some type of movement, but it all depends on how Calgill feels now. Pretty good lead for him over at first. Ibar hit a fly ball to left field, the third inning. He's 0 for 1. Pops this one, found him into the seats. Eric with his left hand on his hip just uh, looks frustrated. Has not been able to get it going since the All Star break. Good numbers with Ben on base. He was two for 15 coming into this game. Now two for 16 since the break. Pops it up. Right side of the infield. Bernier. Second baseman shading his eyes. Two outs. Let's go back and see uh, Calgill hit that bag on the infield base. Hit. Going down the line. Last long stride to make sure he got to the base and avoid the tag and the ankle and instep on that base. There's no give at all on the base. Still trying to walk it off, work it off right now. Jamie Shuck one for two. A single, a stolen base, and a run score to the first. Tried to bunt his way on the last time, and Pelfrey made a fantastic play on the re retire. This one's out towards shallow left field. Cleet Thomas coming on, and he will make the running catch. The inning comes to an end. Five complete here at the Big A. The Angels maintain a 1 0 lead.
Angels baseball is brought to you by AT&T. Rethink possible. And by 76. We're on the driver's side. Hills with a run of the first inning have made it stand up so far with Jared Weaver on the hill. One nothing as we start the sixth inning. 74 pitches, 51 strikes for Weaver. Pelfrey has been just as good. 76 pitches, 47 for strikes. It's limited the Angels to just four hits. All four singles. A pretty good jump ball between Pelfrey and Weaver. Yeah. Both 6-7. Picks floor mode and then Thomas. Eight not at one for Minnesota. Hicks 0 for one. Grounded is short of the third inning. Aaron Hicks, a very good golfer, has been a scratch golfer since 12 years old. So you're saying he has good hand eye coordination? No question. And more than likely, though, you if you want to go for a fastball, go upstairs with a fastball. He's going to be able to hit the ball down low. Good change up. Oh, with two. Big difference with balls sitting on a tee as opposed to at varying speed. I don't know about that. I never like to hit the golf ball myself. It seems to be moving enough <laughs> for me on the tee. You got to fix that diet. <laughs> I cannot hit a golf ball. One ball, two strikes. Six strikeouts, no walks, one hit allowed for Weaver. Two and two. Off speed rolls this one over to Trumbo foot race and the uh, Weaver just gets there ahead of the uh, speedy Aaron Hicks one out this copyrighted telecast presented by authority of the Los Angeles Angels it may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Angels baseball LP. One out, noble to yawn. Pedro Floramon swings the first one out to shallow left center field. Now Trout dealing with the sunshine does a nice job of kind of get to the side of it. You see a lot of that from outfielders on a day like today. Kind of let that ball drift to their side as opposed to playing it yeah. straight on as you would in a night game. Yeah, you want to make sure to side better view of the baseball come down with the glasses on and be able to shade the sun with your glove at that angle. Also good if you're Weaver to get those quick outs as the game progresses here later in the ball game. Cleet Thomas had to play with two outs, twice a struck out. It's a ball one. Weaver, such a perfectionist. He knew his last two pitches, he kind of came out of his mechanics, walked around the mound to get back to hitting his spot. Two balls on a strike. This one headed toward the seats. A lot of times, you know, we, we talk about Weaver, and a lot of other people talk about the fact he throws across his body, but when he gets in the throwing position it's in perfect spot each time for him and that changeup is at times absolutely unhittable because you think fastball same arm angle and then he's able to turn over a circle changeup and hit the spot at 76 Still at two balls, two strikes. Well, he has the great deception 
Great arm angle, the exact same arm angle with all four of his plus plus pitches that, that he has. 85 pitches now thrown for Weaver here with two outs in the sixth. Thomas hits one out to right. Calgo comes racing in, makes the running grab. And another one, two, three inning for Weaver. We'll head to the bottom of the sixth inning. Still one nothing Angels. Bottom of the sixth inning, one nothing Angels. It'll be Trout, Pujols, and Trumbo against Mike Pelfrey. Pelfrey's done a heck of a job today. He's really not uh, not overpowering. He doesn't pick up a whole lot of strikeouts. He's got four of them today with no walks, but he has been around the strike zone. I guess you could say effectively wild, not wild in the traditional sense, but just missing enough to keep hitters off balance. Yeah, especially when he runs that fastball two seamer inside. Opens up that whole outside part of the plate. Child looks at a breaking ball for a strike. He hasn't thrown a lot of split finger fastballs in his game. A couple pretty effective ones, but his curveball and slider at times, pretty solid too. A one pitch. So I'm going to miss on the fastball. 2 John 0 for 1, a strikeout of the first, hit by a pitch in the third. Well, if you're a youngster watching Palfrey and, and Weaver pitch in this game, you can see the importance of change in speeds. Change-ups, curveballs, makes your fastball that much better. Instead of the same hard fastball, hard slider. It's easier for a hitter to time those hard pitches. Weaver with four plus pitches. Again, just because he's not throwing 95 doesn't mean he doesn't have a plus fastball. His command of his fastball makes it a plus pitch. He's had six pitches in this game at 90 miles an hour or above. Not a ton of 90s, but location outstanding. Cal remains at a ball and two strikes. Trout to hit one a long way, a fan. Two balls, two strikes.
Pools on deck. And he got him with the off speed pitch. One down. Strike at number five. One of those cement mixer sliders that backed up. Newman wants his slider away. And backed up inside part of the plate. I see it looked like his split finger fastball. It had backup type action. If you drop your wrist at all with a split finger fastball, it will have that running action inside of a right handed batter. Is that on purpose though? Or a mistake? You, can, you can do that. Kevin Apier, who pitched to me in Kansas City, also a member of the World Series team in 2002 for the Angels, could do that with a split finger fastball. He can just manipulate his wrist enough where he can make it go straight down or run back like a backup slider. So you can do that if you're comfortable with the grip of the baseball. Albert one for two with the RBI single of the first. Hit a fly ball to left, the third. Just missed it in the third inning. Two and one. 85th pitch of the afternoon for Palfrey. Fifty-two of them in the strike zone, so thirty-three out of the zone. So you're right, Victor. He's kind of been effectively wild, although no walks. Enough pitches that doesn't allow the hitter to be comfortable at the plate that are missing, whether it's in or down and away. Ground ball to short. Floor mode has it. Two down. The game at Houston now in the bottom of the ninth today. 4 3 Oakland. Michael Bourne has hit a grand slam for the Cleveland Indians, so they lead the Mariners now 8 to 1 at the bottom of the fifth. Seattle's been on a heck of a roll. Eight game winning streak. A couple of former Angels lefties on the hill. Scott Casimir going against Joe Saunders in that game in Seattle. Trumbo takes outside for ball one. Single leading off the fourth. One for two on the afternoon. Started first base today. Back toward the middle. That's three consecutive multi hit games for Mark Trumbo. Another good approach to play for Trumbo. Another base hit. Last at bat, Pelfrey ran a fastball in. He was able to tuck his hands in and get that baseball into left field. This one up the middle. Howie 0 for 2. Today, two for 11 in the series. And that game now is a final in Houston. And Ryan Cook finished that one off quickly. Brett Balfour blew the save last night through a lot of pitches. Not a good night overall last night for closers. Single by Drumble, the fifth hit for the Angels today. The closers just had to have that mentality, just forget about what happened that night before right away as quick as possible. Oh, Ernesto would love the opportunity to be able to get in and close this game out today for Weaver and the Angels. Three balls and no strikes. Okay, on deck, sorry. He's had a, done, done a nice job against the Angels. The Twins this year have won all four games. They do have a makeup game at Target Field coming up in September. Three and one.
Delman set up inside. Here's the 3-1 pitch. Trumbo takes off, and it is ball four. There's the first walk of the afternoon by the big right-hander. So two on now, two outs for Kiasco. That's your opportunity, a two-out rally. Base hit and a walk. Luke Anderson, pitching coach for the Twins, is going to go out to talk to Pelfrey right now to make sure he's okay. Make sure he's still strong enough. Some scrambling going on right now in the Twins' bullpen. Nobody up and loosening as of yet. 93 pitches for Pelfrey. Minnesota with a very good bullpen. Looks like it's Swarzak maybe getting up. Anthony Swarzak, right-hander, first man up. Swarzak's thrown the ball very, very well against the Angels throughout his career. He's two and one with an ERA, 1.84, 29 and a third innings pitched. Trouble at second, Kendrick at first. Kiaspo okay, swinging first pitch, it's went out toward left center field. And Hicks moving over. And Thomas is there. Hicks makes the catch in the inning. Comes to an end. So after a walk, Kiaspo, first ball swinging through six, one nothing Halos. The Mariners are sailing along. They've won eight in a row, but that's in jeopardy down eight to one, now nine to one to Cleveland in the sixth. In the Pine Tar incident 30 years ago today, George Brett hits a home run off a of goose gossip that Billy Martin at the bat challenged and ruled out. Goose going upstairs with a fastball. And they've had some tremendous confrontations when they were playing that high fastball, but George Brett loved the high fastball, and Tim McClellan rules that George Brett had an illegal bat because of too much pine tar and George kind of lost his mind there for a while at that point ruled out they eventually overthrew that they had to go back to New York and play later on in the season in front of just a few people in the stands top of the seventh inning one nothing Angels Doug Bernier ready to lead things off you know what I took away from that clip Tim McClellan wearing the old school ponies Bernier trying to punt his way off. And I'll never forget this when George said when he was running out there, each step he took, he saw that Tim McClellan looked that much taller as he got closer to him. And yeah, McClellan not backing down no. by any stretch of the imagination. No. Bernier has the only hit of this game. Broken bat single to shallow center. Breaking ball is 0-2. Matter of fact, he's the only base runner of the game. A two-strike base hit. Oh, two pitch. Change up. 
That's a great sequence of pitches for Weaver. Curveball backs it up with an unhittable changeup. Swing and miss. This perfect location. Great spot. Well out in front. See Bernier, the bat was well out in front of the baseball. First strikeout for Weaver since the third. He's got seven in this game. There's Morneau. Shoots one out to left field. Not very deep. J.B. Shuck comes in. Two outs. That's how good a changeup is. You can get some quick outs. The changeup by design is not necessarily a strikeout pitch. It's to get easy outs. He's got a couple one-pitch outs on changeups today. That one for Morneau. Two outs, nobody on, and it's Ryan Doma, the catcher up. He's grounded to first and hit a fly ball to right. <laughs> Mentioned Weaver with seven strikeouts, season high from eight. That was against Oakland last start on Friday. This is the time he's been a couple counts of 2 0. He'll walk around and regather his mindset of what he's going to try to do against a very good hitter in Doman. It's the sixth time he's been behind the count, 2 0 in the game. Three balls and no strikes. Chris Herman on deck. And he walked him on four pitches. First walk allowed. Second base runner of the game for Minnesota. MLB.tv celebrates 11 years. You can catch all of the second half action in HD quality. Watch every out of market game live on more than 350 mobile and connected devices. Just visit MLB.tv. Baseball everywhere. So Herman, the right fielder, comes up. Struck out on the second, grounded to short. That was in the fifth inning. Third ball in for a strike. Looks like Anthony Swarzak will be coming into the game. Continues to warm up. Out of the bullpen for Minnesota. The Angels have the bottom third of their order coming up here in the seventh. Oh, two. So far, curveball, changeup. Away. He's got an option of, of another all speed pitch in the outside corner or try to paint a fastball just off the corner. Away. Ninety seventh pitch of the afternoon for Jared. Herman goes down swinging. The inning comes to an end. Seven that he stretched out here at the big A and the Halos. The bottom third of the order coming up. Up one and nothing.
Angels baseball is brought to you by Jack in the Box. Go big at a Jack in the Box near you with Jack's new Big Stack Burger. And by Chase. Send money to almost anyone, anywhere with your smartphone. Chase Quick Pay, so you can. Beautiful shot high above the big A of the Angels with a 1-0 lead. Jared Weaver, 7 strong. Eight strikeouts for him, matching a season high. One walk, one hit allowed. He'll be coming back out for the bottom of the seventh inning, I would imagine, if not more. That's Anthony Swarzak taking over for Mike Pelfrey, in and out who is in, who is out. Swarzak, 27-year-old Fort Lauderdale, Florida native. And a 3-6 and six mark with a 5.03 ERA last year for Minnesota. It's turned things around this year. Yeah, fastball, 87-92. Very good slider, curveball, changeup. Second round picks. Chris Ineta fouls off the first pitch. And like I mentioned earlier, very good numbers against the Angels. 1.84 career ERA. And that's in 29 and a third innings pitch for him. Yeah, he was a starter coming up through the system. And then started to transition to the bullpen in 2011. 27 games, 11 starts that year. I remember a couple years ago, he was locked up against Weaver on a Saturday afternoon game, in which he had a no-hitter late in the game. Yeah. Last year, all but uh, five games out of the bullpen. Breaking ball. It's one ball, two strikes. Palfrey, by the way, six innings, five hits, one run. It was earned. Five strikeouts, one walk. Good outing for Palfrey. Only one win in his last 11 starts coming into the game today. Ionetta lifts one out toward right center field. Not very deep. And Hicks moving over. One out. Ionetta 0 for 3. Take a look at our Hyundai key to the game once again. Talked about unchained for Mike Sosha, allowing some runners to have some action. Not many runners in the game for the Angels. But the one runner able to score was J.B. Shuck, who stole second base and ended up scoring on a base hit by Albert Pujols. So the need for some action on the base pass important. Maybe to scratch another run or two across for Soch and the Angels. There's Colin Calgill, the right fielder, one for two. Infield base hit last time up. That'll leave it up to count. Ground ball toward the middle. Florbo can get him. Calgo with a two hit game. So six hits in the ball game for the Angels. All six singles. That'll bring up Ibar. Calgary will look like he ran well down the line. You have to believe there's going to be some type of action here with Ibar up. Calgo with good speed at first. First one is down low. Now you get a count. At least you can do something now because taking away the potential pitch out. Be behind the count for Swarzak 1-0. Calgill took off. The hit and run was on, and Ivar slaps it foul. He puts up the count at 1-1. Well, Swarzak was very close to not stopping when he delivered the baseball. He's real quick on his delivery. Ivar 0 for 2. Couple of fly ball outs, one to left, one to second. Calgill doesn't go, and that pitch is inside. Two and one now.
Last downing for Swarzak and ending in a third on the 21st. As against Cleveland. Another real good hit and run count here. 2 1 with one out. Calgill takes off. Bybar lines with a right center field, a base hit. Calgill round second. He'll head to third. The hit and run works. First and third with one out. J.B. Shuck coming to the plate. It's good to see Mike Sosha putting that on. Great movement by the defense. And he shortened up your swing as a hitter because you're trying to make contact. Good job by Eric Ibar. And you got J.B. Shuck here with an opportunity to get the second run across. Discussion always potentially with Ibar going, potentially a suicide squeeze. Both these managers know the other manager's tendencies very well. Chuck one for three, a single with a run scored back in the first. Kluf, the third baseman, plays in now. JB from this angle pulled off on that fastball away. Just try to stay and keep that front shoulder in, try to make contact, hit a fly ball to left center field. Good speed on the bases and at the plate. Calgill standing at third, Ibar at first. Good lead for Ibar at first base, too. This is lined to short, two outs. Coming up to Trout coming up here. 0 for 2 today. Two strikeouts and a hit by pitch. He's probably happy that uh, Pelfrey's out of the game. He never looked comfortable at the plate with Pelfrey on the mound today. Yeah, that first at bat struck him out with a fastball away, then ran the fastball in to hit him in the tricep, and then gets him looking on a splitter that stayed on the inner half. Pitch way outside. Swarzak wants a new baseball. You got to believe Swarzak's going to throw Trout a lot of sliders here. So if you're Calgill at third, just be ready just in case one of those baseballs hit the dirt and gets away from Domit behind the plate. Halo's looking for some insurance here. Have Calgill standing at third. Ibar at first. Two outs here in the seventh. One nothing Angels. Just inside with the fastball. Two and out. Pujols is on deck. Low run in this game. Coming back to the first inning. So Pujols had an RBI single on a 3-0 pitch against Calfrey. The brought home shut. Two and one. Slider. Let's see if Trout can have that approach, hit the ball to right center field. We'll try to back it up with a fastball away. In the air to right field, hit pretty well. Going back on it is Herman. He's got a beat on it. And the inning comes to an end. The Angels leave a couple on the bases and one in scoring position. We're through seven, one nothing Angels.
Twitter poll question of the series, your favorite ex-Angels first baseman, Rod Carew, edges out. Wally Jordan, 39% of the vote versus 36. J.T. Snow finishing, uh, finish things up at 25% of the vote. As we start this eighth inning. And appropriate, too, that Rod would, uh, would win the Twitter poll, considering Angels and the Twins are battling it out here. Hall of Famer, great glove, tremendous hitter. First one to Trevor Plouffe is outside. One ball, no strikes. Plouffe is 0 for 2. Fly ball to center to line up to Kayaspo as he looks at the strike. Century mark. Pitch is thrown today. 67 of them in the strikes. So a very good ratio for Weaver. Plouffe pops it up. Left side of the infield. Eric Ibar puts the hand up. Has the glasses on. One out. The other thing, too, for Weaver is that he's been very consistent as far as pitch count per inning. Eight strikeouts. You go back to that first inning. He had 23 pitches in that first inning, 11 of which were to Justin Mordo. Eventually got the strikeout, but it cost him 11 pitches. But all of a sudden, as the game progressed, hitting his spots. We talked about it in the pregame show with Tim Salmon. You and me, Victor, about the fact is early on he was going to establish his fastball with a lot of younger hitters and then start utilizing his curveball and changeup, and it's been very effective for him. First pitch swing in Colabello. Now it's Howie Kendrick with the bare hand, and his glass is leaving. Two outs. And another one pitch out for Weaver. That helps Weaver out. Give a chance to work uh, into the night, if not beyond. That's three one pitch outs for Weaver in the game. In the discussion with Trumbo to allow him to stay back, and Weaver has that coverage on the right side of the infield for a slow roller. So that allows Trumbo to have more range on a ground ball hit his way. Aaron Hicks 0 for 2, a couple of ground outs. One to short, one to first. Three and out. Well, ideally, you would like to be able to come back and get Hicks here. That way, you could potentially go through the ninth inning and not have to face Morno. Lorimer, the ninth place hitter, is on deck. This one's pulled into right field, a base hit. Second hit of the ball game. The pitch was up in the zone. Speedy Aaron Hicks representing the tying run is at first base. And Lorimer, the shortstop, coming up 0 for 2 today with a strike and a fly ball to center. It looked like more of a get over fastball for Weaver. It picks out in front, but still able to get a good part of the bat on the baseball and in the right field. Now deal with speed at first. A little two seam fastball. Just enough out in front to keep it certainly in the ballpark because it wasn't located necessarily well. Scott Downs, Kevin Jefferson beginning to play catch.
Those pitches thrown by Weaver this year, 118, last start. That was on Friday against Oakland. Hicks with a big lead at first base. Game of cat and mouse will begin now. He oh. might have hurt his leg going back to the base. Yeah. What Weaver had done there, he had stepped off the pitching rubber, and, and Hicks wasn't going back initially, then threw over quickly to first base. Back out there with a big lead. Florimo looks at a strike. Hicks has seven stolen bases, been caught three times. Still stretching out the leg, the right leg in particular. Now you have an option if you're Mike Sosha to put a pitch out on. I'll tell you what, that pitch before by Weaver, quick pitch, change up, very difficult to run on end to be able to time as a hitter. Hicks takes off, it's a swing and a miss. No throw. And an 0-2 count now on floor mode. Hicks at second base. Eighth stolen base. When Weaver realizes at this point, yes, you want to be quicker than the plate, but the reality is you have two outs. You have outstanding out pitches. So you're not going to give up the quickness to the plate for the quality of a pitch. So 0-2. Trying to finish off Florimone right now. One ball, two strikes. The Angels in the bottom of the eighth inning have Pools, Trumbo, and Kendrick coming up. So Swarzak's going to come back out for the eighth inning. One two pitch upstairs two balls two strikes When now is an infielder you have to be prepared to do whatever it takes to knock the ball down It's a ground ball in the hole just knock it down and keep it in front of you just in case for can make contact Weaver got the first two outs easily in the eighth Came up the single now stolen base to Hicks 2 2 out back Flormo's not in a, a two-strike approach either. He's trying to swing. Put the Twins on top. Over last night, two-run shot. And that was a changeup. And you wonder if Weaver will go with a curveball now. And make sure it's away, though. Barely get a piece of a curveball. That one was middle part of the plate, though. You want to make sure if you throw a curveball against him, you throw it away. Hicks standing at second. Took Jared four pitches to get the first two outs. He's thrown 11 cents. That's a called strike three. Down goes Florida. Locked them up with that no seam fastball. The inning comes to an end. We'll head to the bottom of the eighth. The Angels still up one nothing.
for Jared Weaver. 1-0, the Angels lead it. Nice pitch on Florimo. That no-seam fastball and the reaction, priceless from Weaver. How much does he mean to this team? His competitive edge. Pumped up. Makes a perfect pitch. Nine strikeouts. Season high for him. One walk, two hits. Pujols, Trumbo, and Kendrick against Swarzak. 114 pitches thrown by Weaver. Longest outing. That's 30 in the third innings pitch. His last four home starts with one earned run for Weaver. Albert one for three. RBI single in the first. Nesto Frieri getting ready. Albert grounds one short. Florimone has it. One out. Stick around after the last down. Angels live post game. Presented by your SoCal Monster Dealers. Break it all down for you. Trumbo's been seeing the baseball well in this entire series. See if he can give that insurance for Ernesto. More than likely coming in the game now for Jerry Weaver. Trouble with a couple of hits today. It's three straight for him. Multi-hit games. Two for three overall. All seven hits today. Singles for the Angels. Handles out an opportunity with first and third in the seventh inning. Able to cash in the run. One for five today with that in scoring position. Up and in. Three balls, those strikes. Back to back, 3 0 counts. For Trumbo, last time took a 3-0 fastball, middle part of the plate. I don't think he's going to take this one if it's a fastball. Got one, it's 3-1. Maybe the last fastball he sees. Yeah, I would think right now, Swarzak has a good slider. But Trumbo's got to be thinking, all right, I let that fastball go. I'm going to be aggressive on the next fastball. I wouldn't be surprised if a slider came around. There he goes with a fastball. This is out to right. Herman is there. Two outs. Brings up Howie Kendrick. Halos head out of the road. First of four tomorrow night against the Oakland Athletics at the Coliseum. C.J. Wilson and Dan Straley. Jerome Williams, Bartolo Colon on Friday. Saturday, it's a big Fox game. Joe Bland against Tommy Malone. And on Sunday, getaway day, Tommy Hansen and Jared Parker. Jared Weaver will face Matt Garza on Monday in Texas. First of three in Arlington. And CJ coming off an outstanding game last time out. Now he looks at his drive. Garza, by the way, will make his debut tonight against the Yankees. Quick worker. Yeah, no. No. At least he's not working on the getaway day. Oakland won today 4 3 over Houston. Seattle's about to have its eight game winning streak snap. So, yeah. Uh, heck of a comeback in the eighth, ninth. Down 9 to 1 to the Indians. They've been swinging the bats extremely well. We saw that just before the All Star break against the Angels. They carried it over into the second half. Two balls, two strikes. Kendrick, 0 for 2, had a walk in the sixth inning. Got 
Bouncer back towards second. Bernier has it. The Angels go down in order. We will head to the ninth here at the Big A. The Halos with a 1 0 lead. Mike Sosha's gone to the bullpen after Jared Weaver. Eight shutout innings, but uh, got extended there after giving up the hit to Hicks and then having to deal with Pedro Flormone. So Mike going to the bullpen, bringing in his closer, Ernesto Frieri. Comes on to try to close this one out. See if he can bounce back. We talked about closers have to have that mentality. You forget about what happened the night before, and Ernesto an opportunity to pick up his 25th save here today against the team that got him last night. He'll be facing the top of the order, too, barring pinch hitters. Thomas, Bernier, and Morneau. The problem last night is not being able to finish off hitters. Because Ernesto got ahead of Jamie Carroll to lead off that ninth inning. Carroll got a base hit. Same thing with Morneau. Got another base hit. And it kind of just snowballed on him from there. Halo's trying to snap a three-game losing streak. Clay Thomas, the batter. First one is a little bit low, apparently. It's one ball, no strikes. Thomas today, 0 for 3. Two strikeouts and a fly ball to right. Two balls and no strikes now. Well, that first pitch looked like it was right in the strike zone. Then Ernesto trying to make sure he threw a strike. Aimed that fastball and it ran off the corner. Two and one now. <laughs> Two one pitch. Thomas fouls it off the left. So we're evened up now. Two balls, two strikes. Doug Bernier, the second baseman on deck. Justin Moore, no will bat in this inning. There's the 2 2. Almost got him to chase. Did he go? No. Ted Barrett says he did not go. It looked like from our angle, it didn't look like he went. He certainly was able to hold off on the swing. Full count. Fouled off.
Another 3 2. And he walked him. Nowhere near the strike zone there. Tying run now on base. They'll bring up Bernier. I think Bernier, he has to bunt. Weaver, by the way, eight innings, two hits, nine strikeouts, one walk, no runs. Looking to even up his record on the season. Four and five coming into today's start. And here, one for three. Single back in the first. Chaos will weigh in on the grass at third base, anticipating a bunt. And this one's popped up. Trumbo can't get to it. No one won. Well, the interesting thing is for Mike Sosha, if Renier is able to get the bunt down in advance. Thomas the second as you go ahead and walk Morno with an open base. It's a very difficult decision to make for a manager, but you put the go ahead run on it first. And show bunt again, pops it up again. Trumbo and I net on again. It falls into foul territory. Well, because Trumbo has to hold Thomas at first. He takes a while to be able to get moving to be able to try to catch that ball. No chance for him to come in there that quickly to get it. Lead off walk to Cleet Thomas. He stands at first. Oh, two, and then he hits him. So the first two now have reached here against Freire. Well, United is setting up away. And that fastball runs well inside. So a walk and a hit batter now. That's dropping your wrist and creating that type of movement, that much movement. Scott Downs getting ready, as is Kevin Jepson now. Mike Butcher's going to come out and pay a visit. Butcher trying to take as much time as possible to give both Downs and Jepson an opportunity to get ready. Morneau today 0 for 3. Tying run at second to go ahead run at first now. The issue last night was getting ahead and not being able to finish off hitters. Today falling behind, walking a guy, getting ahead, and then hitting a guy. Not as if he'd been overused. Although he did pitch Friday and Saturday, but had not pitched since Saturday prior to last night. Outside. One ball, no strikes. Horn over the strikeout. Get those shallow fly balls to left field on the off-speed pitches that Weaver fed him in the fourth and seventh innings. Clear to not in a sacrifice situation with this guy at the plate. And he's hitting the five double plays. Broken bat looper on the infield. Freire lets it bounce. Fires their first. They're going to have to tag out the runner between first and second. That's Bernier. And there's out number two. Wow, what a smart play by Ernesto. A lot of times umpires don't let that one go. But what a play by Ernesto. So Thomas ends up at third base, and there are two outs. And what I mean by that, a lot of times on, on a ball hit up in the air in the infield, they'll call sacrifice fly, and they will not allow that baseball to drop. But great decision. Jams, Morno, and Ernesto lets the ball drop. He knows he's on the grass, so it's not going to go far away from him. Now, Gardhire is going to go out to talk. This 
to Michelinski about that play. Well, what a play by Ernesto. See anybody throw up their arms as infield fly roll? Nope. And jams them. And not one umpire threw the hands up for an infield fly. Then out of first call, and then a good job as far as the rundown being quick with it, especially with Thomas at third. Here's Ryan Domit, tying run at third. Domit looks at his strike. <laughs> Domit over two, and a walk. Almost gets hit there. One ball, one strike. Outside, two balls and a strike. Dolman last night late in the game had a couple of big hits for Minnesota. RBI double in the eighth as well as one of the tenth, and that was against Freire. And the one in the tenth against Freire was out toward left center field. And J.B. Shuck has to be ready to pitch him away, hit the ball that part of the field. Drop playing of the pull in center. Outside. And it's three balls and one strike. Three one pitch way outside. He walked him. So two out walk pitch runners at the corners. And Chris Herman will bat now. Left handed batter who hit the grand slam that chased Freire last night in the 10th inning. And it was a slider on the inner half of the plate. And he crushed out for his first career grand slam. Part of a seven run. Tenth inning for Minnesota. Herman today over three. Lee Thomas is over at first base, or pardon me, third base. Jamie Carroll, the pinch runner for Dolman at first. And Ernesto realized what the pitch was that Herman hit out against. He's going to go away now. First one is in there for a strike. Kayaspa is going to come in now. Perhaps some words of encouragement from Alberto. But I, I don't understand that because you have the momentum going you through a strike. You don't want to slow down a pitcher at that point. You want to allow him to continue that arm slot he just had. Swinging a miss, so with two. going out to make sure he talks to the infield. Is this some case? It's Carroll at first base. Minnesota may send him here 0-2. Try to get in a rundown. A stoppage in play. Trying to run out of the field. It's just been absolutely dog piled on this behind first base. 
You know, Nesta, not a bad idea if he just wants to keep his arm loose now. Ernesto and there. Kayaspa once again talking things over. An 0-2 count. Last thing you want is to have anything disrupt momentum here, and that's what this has certainly done. Well, I think we thought he might do is get some throws in here just to make sure he keeps that same arm slot. Go to an area of the plate in which you're going to try to finish off Herman with. Even though you're not throwing everything behind it, but that arm slot you want to have, muscle memory. Hit that spot, and now when Herman gets in there eventually, then you hit the spot with velocity to finish him off. The perp walk now complete out through the uh, right field fence. No balls, two strikes here on Chris Herman. Lee Thomas standing at third. He's the tying run. Jamie Carroll, the pitch runner at first base. Perhaps a little indecision there with Friere. It looks like he's shaking off. We well, had a conversation with Chris Ionetti today about this exact batter for Ernesto. The 0-2. Swing and a miss. Light that baby up as the Angels shut out the Twins by the final of one to nothing. Boy, what a job by the pitching staff. Jared Weaver, unbelievable for eight shutout innings. And what a job by Ernesto to come back, not only with the strikeout here, but what he did on that jam shot to Justin Morno. Able to feel that ball and get two outs with one pitch against the most dangerous hitter in the lineup today for Minnesota. Ernesto does rebound and gets his 25th save as Jared Weaver picks up his fifth win. Now 30 to third innings pitch at home. His last four starts for Weaver, just one earned run. All the credit goes. Chris Ionetta, what a job he did behind the plate. Pulls on a 3-0 pitch, drives in the only run of the game, J.B. Shuck. He singled, stole second base, scores on pulls his base hit, but Chris Ionetta, unbelievable job working with Weaver and then getting Ernesto through that ninth inning as the Twins only get two hits. The Angels win one nothing. their second one nothing victory of the season. The other one back against the Seattle Mariners back in June 19th earlier this year. But what a job by Ernesto coming back. Going to be down there with Jose. Going to interview Ernesto. What a job he did, not only with the brain, but with the arm. Jose, Thank down to you. Thanks a lot, Marco. Uh, Ernesto, one of the things you say you keep learning in this business about closing is the fact that you have to turn a page very quickly, and that happened immediately for you. How are you able to come back and get the job done? You know what? To be successful in this game, you need to have a short memory. You know, you need to learn how to play one game at a time, and... and what happened yesterday is in the past. You just need to come to a ballpark uh, with, uh, with the same willing that you're going to win and trying to fix the, the, the little thing that you need to fix. And I came with that mentality today, and, and thanks God that we got the, the win. Very entertaining play. Talk to us and walk us through the play where you allowed that ball to drop in order to get that double play. You know what? You never expect those kind, those kind of play, but you, got, you have to be mentally prepared for anything. You know, you got men on first and second. Any pop up, if you see the the, 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 the runner is is given is is gonna give up, just uh, let it land and 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 just what I did, you know, like pick it up. I threw to first. Next time, I'm gonna try to go to second. Right now, physically, of course, you're challenged because it's a new role for you, you're getting job done, 25 saves. But what are you adjustment wise day to day to make sure your stuff is working better each day? I just need to attack the strike zone, you know, make my pitches, keep the ball down, and elevate my fastball whenever I want to. Um, just work ahead. Every time that I do, I'm successful. Whenever I start behind the count, is when I get hurt. Big win. Gracias. Gracias a ti. Ernesto Friori gets it done. 25 saves now for the Colombian closer. Angels live with Victor Rojas and Tim Salmon. Jamie Maggio also joining us here after this.